Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Monterey on Tonight, show number 51. And I want to welcome back on show number 51, this gal right here from show number 27. <laughs> and the night she was here the first time, I got her name wrong. But tonight I know how to say her name correctly. It's Katie Brizzoni. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Welcome, Katie. It's so nice to have you back. And you know, there's only a handful out of all of the 52 shows. How, what, what show number is this, Dylan? 51. <laughs> <laughs> there's, only 51. A, there's only a handful of, of co-hosts that have been back, invited mm. back, and you're one of them. So I'm lucky. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you. Now, she... Uh, she just asked, uh, or someone asked you out in the green room, uh, you know, you look like uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence. <laughs> and then, uh, I, of course, when I first met her, I said, Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. But she said, it's a compliment. Yeah, it is a compliment. So let's tell everybody, Katie, what you do here in the Monterey area. She is a coach. I am a coach. And that entails a lot of different things so why don't you tell our viewers exactly what your background is now i know when you were here the first time mm -hmm. i had gone on linkedin yep and i had found the word parsons mm -hmm. and then you said to me that night well i need to update <laughs> <laughs> i need to update my linkedin because yep. that was a couple of years ago yeah uh well my background i went to uc berkeley and ah, good girl. Studied business, ran track there, and then got my master's in strategic design and management from Parsons School of Design in Which New York is City. Big time. Big this time. Is a big time college. Um, I did some work with Lego and Roku out of college, doing PR marketing and communications. But my real passion has always been psychology and neuroscience and honestly, just like solving complex problems, which is why I went back and got my master's. So good for you. Now I am a coach for kids and adults and families and then also a consultant. So the work I do with kids is kind of like, I like to call it like their emotional partner uh -huh. in compassion and chaos. So I help with emotional regulation and nervous system support. And then for adults, it's, I like to say, an emotional partner in crime. So I help uh -huh. adults look back into their past and figure out what is blocking them or supporting them in their growth and we do lots of like holistic that's wonderful stuff i yeah. mean really you know years ago there were no one that i knew doing the kind of work you're doing yeah. now it's i love a whole it. new field it is a whole new field and it's super important i think in the world that we're in today and you're helping people I and that's the whole people. idea yeah you want to help people yeah and so uh, is there a website that you have that we I, can put up on the screen? I and do. Direct people. There it is. That's me. <laughs> there it is. All right. Now, what is the website so we can send people to you? It's katiebrizzoni.com. I actually wrote that. You can see my name is Katie. I am six years old. Uh, if I could give a gift, if I could give a present to the world, I would give love. And I feel like I'm now at this point in my life where that is exactly oh, what I'm so doing. Great. And I'm that's doing so it for great. kids, adults, and for businesses because I do... Um, consulting work for businesses as well. After our audience watches you on air tonight for three hours, they're going to want to get in touch mm. with you. They really hey. are. I hope I we can send that. a lot of business to Kate <laughs> that she is yeah. so occupied with new clients that she'll say, well, I have to put you on the waiting list. <laughs> that would be great. Wouldn't that be good? That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. And when we were uh, first talking to Katie, and we, it's still somewhere on the shelf, we're still working towards it, Katie would like to do television, and mm. she'd like to do TV specifically for kids. Yep. Yeah. And there's a definite need for that. Katie uh, and I talked about, you know, where's the new Mr. Rogers? Mm. Yeah. Coming down the pipeline, folks. Only it's going to be <laughs> Mrs. Rogers. Mrs. Rogers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I... I care deeply. I'm very, very passionate about uh, using media as medicine, honestly. Yes. And I think yeah. the way that TV is right now for kids, I mean, from a neuroscience perspective, like screens are literally activating this addi addiction network yes. in children. And yeah, it's it so is. important that we are 
feeding our kids things that are good for them that help them process what they're going through process the craziness and chaos of the world that we're in and i don't think a lot of tv shows are doing that right they're now not, they're not so and so. that's what was so wonderful years ago about mr rogers yeah he really taught children exactly uh with his show and so mm -hmm. now it's time for your uh show uh, and hopefully we can help you make that happen someday yeah. soon I would uh, love that. Yeah. Although it is a weird thing getting used to seeing myself on screen. Uh, <laughs> well, you know what? And I think we all have to step outside of you, our comfort zone. You do. You do. It's and, all in the work uh, that I do, too. So. You know, look at me. After all these years, I'm still doing TV. Yeah. Full circle. Started out, if you, if you notice in the open, you see a guy at a dance party with dark hair. That's me from 60 mm. years ago. Well, That's, and I love your story. Oh, well, let's let's hope someday I can put the book together. I've been mm. working on it. But the in fact, you know, this Tuesday, Katie, I've been invited to talk to the Rotary Ooh. over at uh, Spanish Bay. It's the Pacific Grove Rotary, and so I'm going to be there doing my little twenty or thirty minutes. But it's going to be the circle, the full circle of my career. I love that in the broadcasting business and out of the broadcasting business and then back into the broadcasting mm. business and now here right now doing this tv show mm. i think it's an important thing for everybody to hear because gary really followed his passion I, and stayed very connected to his inner child and what he was what meant i love to do what you love what i loved yeah, yeah. and yeah. i think that is where we start to heal the world is when we really bring together that innocence and purity and passion of the inner child with this like adult self and katie knows my it. story i do of me almost passing in january mm -hmm. of 2022 from COVID. yeah and so that whole thing that near-death experience really brought me to what i'm doing now yeah so yeah, anyway, I, enough about us. <laughs> yeah, We're going to entertain done. you now with some music. <laughs> we're going to be back here all through the next three hours. We've got three great guests tonight for Monterey on tonight. Tonight I've chosen a music concert with a guy by the name of Michael McDonald. And this particular concert is Michael doing all the Motown music. Mm. So Dylan, let's go get started with Michael McDonald. And here's tonight's Monterey on tonight. And that's Michael McDonald, and he's doing the Motown hits tonight. This is Monterey on tonight. I'm Gary Morris. Katie Brizzoni is my co-host from show number 27, and mm. she's back on show number 51. And it's so nice to have her here. It's so nice to be here. And we've been talking about these little animals. We have been talking and about And she animals. brought these little animals because she uses these animals in her work with kids and she used it tonight with me yep and she said pick your favorite and the owl is who gary picked and then she said why did you pick the owl and i said because i am a night owl <laughs> i stay up late at night and i sleep in in the morning i don't like daylight i'm the same way and uh, so tell me about tell me about the owl well, so the owl helps us understand our obsessions and also leads us into kind of how these obsessions that we have are an opportunity to learn about and express our original nature. So uh -huh. the other question I have for you is what are you obsessed with right now? <laughs> <laughs> or what have a... you been obsessed with throughout your whole life? Oh, well, obviously broadcast mm -hmm. radio and television. I was just sharing uh, a story with Katie while we were uh, off camera about mm -hmm. my very beginning in the broadcasting business and I was on a radio program that my piano teacher had many years ago for her students. I was taking piano lessons from her. She was a famous lady. Mm -hmm. Lucia Pamela. You can Google Lucia Pamela and she's, she's on Google and she was a famous pianist and uh, also the mother of a lady by the name of Georgia Frontieri. Hmm. And Georgia's claim to fame was uh, several years back, she was the owner of the Los Angeles Rams football team. Hmm. So anyway. That's cool. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I was on this radio show at about 11 years old 
with a very high voice. And that's when I got bit by the bug to be in broadcasting. Mm. So that's my, I guess that you asked about passion. And yeah, That's absolutely. what started it all. I love that. And the radio show was called The Encouragement Hour. Mm. So Lucia Pamela was encouraging her students to go find themselves there, mm. whether it's music or I was the announcer on the show. And I also did sing at a very young age. Of course, I sounded like a girl because <laughs> my voice hadn't changed yet. But uh, it, no, it was it was great. And I see what you're doing. Yeah. So when you meet with a, a child now yeah. and you ask them to choose. Yep. Um, do you see them choosing the same animal? No. no. Every day is totally different. It is. So what I love about using animals is essentially it's just our subconscious. This part of us that we don't fully have conscious awareness of picking, trying to understand something mm -hmm. or lead us to a spark, like you were saying, or yeah. a story that we want to tell. So part of us that we're yearning to express gets a chance to come out when we use animals or use nature, for example. And so... What I loved about your example is it you were able to tell us a story that otherwise might have not had a chance to be heard in the world. And Amen. so Amen. every day it totally changes. It, I mean, every every 10 minutes it can change, right? Because there's a different emotion that's present and a different part of us that wants to move Very through or so. be heard. So, yeah. yeah. yeah it's and really you fun. do that when you meet with one-on-one. Uh, one-on-one. -on -one. On -one. I do meet it in with groups, your kids, too. groups. Yeah, so I, I have 32 animals that I use, and wow. each takes us on a journey from, like, the shadow into the light. So I talked about owl going from obsession into original. Horse goes from hurt into okay, healed. Okay, I'm going to do something for the very first yeah. time since we've been doing this show. Hmm. Dylan, come out here. Ooh, Leave the two shots Dylan, on. let's go. Yeah, leave the two shot on, Dylan. Oh, come Dylan's going to pick an animal. Pull up that chair. Is that what we're doing? Yep. Let's go, Dylan. Pull up that chair. And we're going to get Dylan on set. Come on over. <laughs> and Dylan is going to pick one of the animals. Okay. So now you got to pick Which the animal and you got to you. hold it up. And make sure you're on camera Ooh. when you do this. Now. This one. Come on in. Come on in. This one here, the... The walrus? walrus? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, walrus. Walrus. <laughs> walrus. <laughs> I, walrus. <laughs> I call him Wally. Wally. Um, okay. Wally goes from wounded into willing. So, this one's all about, like understanding if there are any closer. wounds you are attending to. So emotionally, physically, mentally, okay. potentially spiritually. And then the whole idea is to then wonder, okay, so like what is this wound here to teach me? And what are you willing to do to kind of tend to and nurture that yeah. part of you that needs a little bit more attention? See that? Okay. Yeah. Do you have an answer to that or do you not want to answer it on know. screen? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to think about that. <laughs> okay, think about it. All right, we'll let him you. think about it. Yeah. And then later in the show, we're going to have him come back and, and, and tell us. Ooh. Okay. Give us the answer. A little coaching session on yeah, it. Yeah. I yeah. love it. For a time. All right. Okay, go back there. <laughs> yeah. I don't. So there's Thanks nobody back there to switch the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> we only have one person running the whole program here, and that's Dylan He's Holmes. He's a star. He, he is the all. star. Hey, by the way, just reminded me. Next week, there will be no Monterey on tonight. Mm. And the following week, there will be no Monterey on tonight because Dylan and his mom and dad and his sister, Rachel, they're going on vacation. Where are you guys going? Uh, we're going to uh, the East Coast. So we're going to we're going to fly to Boston. And Ooh. then uh, we're staying with one of my uncles. I have a few uncles that live on the Cape, Cape Cod. So Ooh, see, nice. his, his dad was a guest on the show a couple of weeks back. And his dad's claim to fame was that he was present at 19 years old at Woodstock. Wow. The big Woodstock show back in Woodstock, New York. Cool. So, so they're going to go back east. Their roots are from back east. And then I'll tell you what, Dylan, I want you to do a little travelogue. Okay. Do some video. When you come back, we're going to get you over here in the chair and we're going to do your travelogue on, mm. on Monterey on tonight. Okay. How fun. Won't that be fun? That will be fun. Yeah. So anyway, that's Dylan Holmes. He's our technical director. Uh, and we couldn't do what we do without Dylan mm. and Rachel. Because when Dylan's not here, Rachel's mm. here. But now, because they're all going to be gone, we have no show for two weeks. Well, 
But anyway, and we'll also be telling you about our move over to channel 27.10 a little later in the show tonight. Okay, let's get back to more music with Michael McDonald, then we're going to bring in our first guest. See you in a few. All right, uh, we're doing this uh, out of sequence here uh, because normally we pay, play a couple of videos, but because there are people out in the green room that want to devour this Mountain Mike's pizza, we are serving it up on air so you can all see the Mountain Mike's beautiful pizza. And this is the extra large edition, which means it's extra, extra big. And Charlie, this is the combo, isn't that correct? The mountain combo. The mountain combo. This sucker is big. Oh, yeah. And if you guys want to get one of these Mountain Mike pizzas, call right now. Ask for Heidi. Tell her you're watching Monterey on tonight and that you want the special discount. <laughs> the special Monterey yeah. on tonight discount. Right, Charlie? You betcha. Okay. That's the only way. That's the only way. And, and you guys are going to get a great deal because Gary Morris said... Call Mountain Mike's Pizza, and uh, Charlie, go get me the get phone number. Please, baby. What's please. the phone number, Charlie? <laughs> I forgot the phone number in Mountain Mike's. Is it on the box? No, I don't think so. They're over at the corner of Broadway and Fremont here in Seaside, and uh, I keep that camera on that pizza because right now there's got to be a lot of folks out there in TV land drooling over this wonderful pizza. And listen, if we had smell-o-vision, you'd be able to... Right, Katie? It you, smells really good. You would be able to smell really, the pizza. Really good. All right, Charlie, what's the phone number? Okay, we got Mountain Mike's. Mountain Mike's. 831. 899. 899. 7900. 7900-831-899-7700. 899-7900. 79, 7900. 79, don't, don't dial the wrong number, though. They'll want to know what you're calling about. Mountain Mike Seaside. Mountain Mike Seaside. Ask for Heidi. Say, I want one of those pizzas like I just saw on TV. Yeah, okay, baby. Dylan. Yeah, Charlie's going to take this away. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for that. Mountain Mike's. Mountain Mike's. Mike's. Wasn't that... Mmm... Uh, that's smells a, good. We that's, should keep that, it in here. You know what? That's the best part of doing this show is smelling that pizza every mm. week when it comes into the green room. And uh, thank you, Heidi, and, and all the folks over at Mountain Mike's mm -hmm. for supplying us with the pizza. This is 52 times three pizzas. Whoa. That's a lot of pizzas. That is a lot of pizzas. Since we've been doing this show. Oops. So, and... and did you want to say something here? I, I, I noticed you had your, your oh, notes Oh, no, here. they just gave it to me out, outside. Oh, okay, They've... okay, okay. So we can go back to the music, and then we'll come back and talk about Some whatever. fun what, stuff. Well, yeah, some fun yeah, stuff. Just Katie excited, and I folks. are just hanging out here yeah. tonight. We, we, uh, we've, we've done one of these shows before back on show number 27 back in January. We have. Yeah, and Katie missed our... Our party that we had. I did. I'm yeah. bummed, but I love you, parties. Parties are yeah. fun. Yeah, that's why I asked if you had a a, a, a mug because we yeah. were giving the mugs out mm. at the party. So anyway, all right, more uh, Michael McDonald, and then we'll be back with our break at seven o'clock. And we are back on Monterey on tonight. I'm Gary Morris. We're here every Sunday night, except for next week and the week <laughs> after. Because <laughs> we're gonna Almost be on a every hiatus. Sunday. This is the first time we've done this. And it's all Dylan's fault. <laughs> Dylan. Because, yeah, because Dylan's going on vacation. And normally when Dylan goes somewhere, we've got Rachel. But Rachel's going too. So we have no Dylan. We have no Rachel. We have no show <laughs> on August 13th and August 20th. But we'll be back. And when we come back, you might have to rescan your TV if you're watching us on channel 19.4. Because that channel's going to go bye-bye. Now, you know, mm. we're also on... Channel 27.1 in Fresno on KKDJ. That's going to stay the same. And we're going to still be on KMBYTV.com. So we're always streaming. If you can't get us with the antenna, you get us <laughs> streaming. You can watch on your phone. It's easy. Laptop, iPad, however. That's if you want to watch. You should watch. And Katie and I have been cooking spaghetti here the last... <laughs> The last 15 minutes, we've been talking about making pasta. We have. Because she's Italian, I'm Italian, mm -hmm. right? But yep. she can't have gluten. 
I can't have gluten. I know. And she can only have a special kind of cheese. It's true. <laughs> Dietary restrictions. It's My really goodness, you're going to be hard to cook for. I know, I know, but it'll all be okay. Okay. She said, well, I'm going to have to watch because I know what I can put in mine. Yep. <laughs> Cooking becomes very creative when you uh, have yeah. restrictions. All things do, really. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, when you go out to dinner, mm -hmm. is there a way that you have to order your food because of all these restrictions? Yes. <laughs> what happened? What do you tell the waiter? Uh, pretty much just keep it pure. <laughs> Olive oil is always good. Yeah. Like, I just got to yeah. keep the food very clean. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. When did you discover that you had this imbalance in... Mm. It's a, a long young child? story. A no, young I. Uh, so when I was 22 or 21, I, I had an ulcer. So Ooh. kind of what got me into coaching was a lot of the trauma that I went ah. through in my life, and and learning the different ways that our body communicates to us. So, so for me, stress. I had two ulcers, and then I. So the stress gave you ulcers. Yeah, stress gave me ulcers wow. in my belly. And then within a week, I went septic, so my blood went bad, and Ooh. it almost killed me. And I had to was in the ER, all the things, and they had to like I call it nuke my body with antibiotics Ooh. to like clear the infection out. But antibiotics also really hurt your stomach lining. Sure they do. So my stomach lining never fully healed, and I couldn't Ooh. have gluten after that. Yikes. And then Yikes. dairy, uh, I had to cut out in the last like eight months. I. <laughs> went through this very wild experience where it looked like I walked through a fire for Ooh, eight months. What, like, like a rash? It was more than a rash. Ooh. But essentially our skin is our largest detox organ and when you have something backed, I was exposed to mold oh. and also had like extreme um, plastic metal fertilizer, gasoline, all these crazy toxins in my blood, which Ooh. we all kind of have. At, you didn't get a transfusion, degree. did you? No, but I had my, my body was purifying itself and cleansing mm. itself. And so when toxins are released, it creates heat, kind of just like what's going on in the world right now with global uh -huh. warming, right? Like yep. when it's trying to purify, it, things get hotter. And yeah. so it l literally looked like I walked through a fire because Goodness. my body was releasing all of this heat and dairy is... So inflammatory have, yep. so i had to cut that out cut everything out <laughs> my goodness katie yes. gee whiz I've well you know you and i have been talking off camera because we do mm. a lot of that on this show but the word spark mm. is something that we want to talk about for just yes, a couple is. of minutes if you'll stay with us then we'll get back to the music but let's talk about spark okay I'd tell people what spark. we mean when we talk about spark well, it came up because you were talking about the encouragement hour and yes. how your piano teacher really saw this spark in you yeah. and was able to cultivate and nurture and tend to and help you tend to the spark in you. And that's a lot of what I do within coaching is start to understand like what that spark is in people, what they're really passionate about. So when you see that in a child, mm -hmm. a young child, a student that you might have, how do you get there? How do you mm. find that place where you can nurture that, where mm. you can encourage them to yeah. come out and be who they really are going to be? Mm. I take them out into different settings. So you can see a different part of a kid when they're in their home. You can see a different part of a kid when they're on the beach versus walking, doing a nature walk, versus interacting with animals, versus talking to them about what they like in school. Um, when you introduce different mediums within art, so you give a kid clay, something different's going to come out versus when they're using pens and some kids are drawn to certain colors and every single one of these things kind of brings out a different way that our heart and our soul want to express itself. And so you can see, start, you can start to see pretty quickly mm -hmm. what it is that light them up. You can see it in the kid's eyes. You can see it in their body. It's this combination of like extreme excitement but also like peace and calm in it uh -huh. so playing music is another really good way some kids like have this natural ability to just start singing and like can catch on to words really quickly tells me a lot about um their emotional understanding and ability to kind of fall into rhythms around us and harmony harmonies and stuff and like that, that is what katie can do for your child mm -hmm. 
with her coaching. Yeah. If you want to reach Katie, you can get her through her website. Yes, you can. Dylan, put that thing up again. Can you uh, get her website up on screen yeah. so they can say hello? Say hello. To Katie Brizzoni. Yeah. I also love doing this with uh, families mm -hmm. and in relationships with adults and then also in organizations. Ultimately, um, challenges and stress and tensions and different things get in the way of this spark from being able to... And you, 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 well, you sent something I saw to Dylan, did where I? you did your artwork. Oh. Dylan, have you got that uh, in the uh, documents that uh, oh, yeah. that Wendy sent? What, well, put that up. I want to mm. just delve into a little bit of Katie's artwork that she did. Look at this. Ooh, this is all about avalanche. Uh -huh. So the different ways that um, our experiences kind of block us, block uh -huh. that spark from being able to shine. There are things that we long for, things that make us silent, things that we start to judge about ourselves, um, ways that we manipulate, uh -huh. um, ways that we fake and hide ourselves to protect this spark in this authentic nature because it doesn't feel safe to fully show itself. And so a lot of the coaching I do takes people back into these experiences and helps soften and bring compassion into these moments so that we feel safe uh -huh. radiating this spark within us and stepping out of our comfort zone to to really put ourselves into our zone of genius which a lot of the times is a path that isn't necessarily laid out for <laughs> for us yeah so. so it takes someone like you mm -hmm. katie to dig in to what these children mm. are are trying to do because yeah. If you see that spark yeah. early on, then you can help them develop yeah, exactly. who they're going to be. And, and, and surround these children with what they need, right? Need different support. They need people who can cultivate and nurture this spark and also start to pay attention to where that spark starts to dim. Yep. yep. And not necessarily, you can't 100% pull them out of those situations all the time, but you can figure out things to bring into that to balance out and stories and different things to help them process their experiences she's so. amazing Aww. she really is no Thanks, you Gary. are you are <laughs> you, you know and if you have a child that wants to find their spark yeah you get a hold of katie you have two more oh, photos more photos oh, yeah. oh wow oh, yeah bunny um each of these animals right so a lot of the times we have trouble we have trouble speaking to the things that we're afraid of. We have trouble uh -huh. speaking to the things that make us angry or have trouble speaking to the things that have pained us in our life. And so using animals is a really easy way to start to kind of cut below what is hard to speak about. Uh -huh. um, and so I use animals and the way that they move and, and their different languages to help us express these parts of ourselves that great. maybe is a little bit harder to express. Is there one more slide? Oh, oh, look at this. Yeah, I make a lot of art where, I, w with what I do, Unleash I... Unleash the Beast yeah. is just coming right at me. Yeah, Unleash the Beast. That's really the... Beastie is my company, and it's all about helping us... Is that us what you called your company? Beastie. Is it Beastie? Yeah, oh, wow. helps us learn the language of our inner beasts. So, I mean, we're all, in some ways, a wounded animal, and so how you engage with a wounded bunny is different than the way you would en engage with a wounded rhino. And I'll so you also have to, no matter what animal, wounded animal you're dealing with, um, you really meet them art. with compassion. I love oh, your thank art. You. This is so yeah. great. I she weave is, together lots of worlds she, and I love it. She develops all of this on her own and that's why she's going to be great mm. in television with a... Uh, series of television shows mm. specifically for children mm. the next mr rogers only <laughs> it's going to be mrs rogers katie brizzoni yeah thank you so much thank you all right we're going to get back to a little bit more music and then we have the mayor Ooh. of pacific grove as our next guest so stay tuned for that you're watching monterey on tonight that's michael mcdonald i'm gary morris that's katie brizzoni hello and Katie is here her second time on Monterey on Tonight. It's so nice to have you back. And Happy she to be brought back. up something that is near and dear to my heart as it is near and dear to her heart. And that is the otter <laughs> over in Santa Cruz <laughs> that's chewing up 
Surfboards. Surfboards. Such a crazy story. Yeah, and you know what? We just went on YouTube and we found the news clip from Channel 7 in San Francisco. Uh, Dylan, is that possible you could run that little clip so we can bring everybody in our audience up to speed on the otter who's eating surfboards in Santa Cruz? <laughs> Surf. <laughs> A sea otter in Santa Cruz getting a lot of national attention over its mischievous and even aggressive behavior out in the surf. Wildlife experts are narrowing in on its capture, but ABC 7 News reporter Lauren Martinez also explains that crowds of people are now flocking to the otter as well. This Santa Cruz sea otter is cute, aggressive, and has a thing for surfers. I was just walking around today and saw all the reporters, and I was like, there's no way that this is the infamous otter, but... Here she is. U.S. Fish and Wildlife says this five-year-old female otter has repeatedly approached surfers and kayakers. Photographer Mark Woodward has captured her strong arm for surfboards from surfers. I've never seen an otter come this close to shore along the cliffs here, nor get even close to surfers. They avoid surfers and humans. Officials say while there have been no confirmed reports of injury, the otter is considered a public safety risk. On Wednesday, a team from U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, and Monterey Bay Aquarium monitored her and attempted to capture her. The swimming culprit is tagged with a radio transmitter. A surfer's going to get hurt or she's going to bite someone. And if she bites someone, I don't want to know what's going to happen. Oh my God. This is video of when San Jose resident June Lee surfboard was attacked by the wanted otter on Sunday. Chewing, biting, um, just tearing it up. Um, so I try to get the otter off. Uh, the board by flipping it over, but it actually got on top of the board. This was Lee's fourth time surfing. He said the five minute encounter felt like an hour. I was a bit scared, especially after they're talking about how they have really strong dogs. I knew I had no chance against her if she started attacking me. Once this forceful otter is captured, officials say she will be examined at Monterey Bay Aquarium and rehome. People are like, just leave it alone, let it be. You guys are in its way, you know, it's doing its normal thing. The truth of the matter is, it is not normal. A spokesperson for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife says as long as conditions are favorable, they'll attempt to capture her. In Santa Cruz, Lauren Martinez, ABC 7 News. All right. I wonder if they have a name for her. It's 841. 841? Yep. Who gave her that number? I don't know. Okay. How, did you, how did you know that? I looked it up. Oh, you I looked it curious. up? I was curious, yeah. So Katie has actually saved an otter's I have, life. I did save an otter. It was a baby otter. It, you know, during the three months of storms, I went on a night walk, and it was pouring rain but i love dancing in the rain and walking oh in the night goodness. and i heard this baby otter crying from the water and so i went down and it was getting washed up it was getting swallowed by the oh. waves and it was getting pummeled against these rocks oh and so goodness. it was getting knocked out and one of my friends happened to be there at the same time and so the otter would get you know shoved up on shore and hit a rock start screaming and crying and then oh, get knocked wow. out again wow. oh my and goodness. so it got up on land at one point and we just like grabbed it grabbed it and it fell asleep in his arms oh. for like 15 minutes i luckily had a number of somebody who works at the monterey bay aquarium in my phone so i called her up and was like hey this just happened like can you send somebody down so they were able to send somebody down and we just had to like hold this baby otter in oh. our hands for it ended up being like 30 minutes. We sang to it because it woke up at one point and it started screeching for its mom. Yeah, sure. But we couldn't put it back in the water because no, it would it, just it, get drowned because yeah, the, the waves were up. huge. Yeah. It was so sad. But Well, good for you. Yeah. What a good deed it, that it, was. The singing, though, it was interesting. I started singing to the otter and it put it back to sleep. Wow. You could see it breathing really deeply from its belly and just like calm down. Calm down. I named okay. it Oski. You named it. Yeah. Well, I had to. Uh, how, yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's what actually uh, Katie is is who brought up the otter story, and yeah. then we went and looked for it. So, what do you think is possessing this mom otter? I think to I, chew up surfboards. What's going on? You know, I believe that all animals are here with a message for us. I mean, ultimately, like we're visitors to her home. Uh huh. So I think that there's some stuff for us all to consider about how we treat nature, how we treat the ocean. Um, how we interact. How we interact with animals and how we interact with each other. And what can we learn 
Lessons would, to yeah, be lessons learned. Lessons to be learned. Let's all ask. Yeah. What is there to learn from this? What are ways so, that we're aggressive with each other? You and I had talked about now if they capture mm. the surf board eating otter what are they going to do with her <laughs> i don't know that's a good question i bet they'll put it in the aquarium you think I mean, they will you think they'll put her in i mean uh, otters are at monterey bay aquarium and say this is the surfboard eating otter i mean it would probably end up being an attraction oh absolutely uh but i i know otters are endangered species like when they came to pick up the otter they were like you know that you shouldn't have like picked up the otter because you're not allowed to like take something that's endangered out of the oh, ocean really? but they were also like you saved its life so like thank you it's for okay, doing it yeah, so it yeah. was like they this gave moral a, conundrum because, a slap on the hand but yeah. then it's okay <laughs> yeah i would never go into the ocean and take an otter out of it but no. if there's one dying yeah you know you well she was obviously in peril can. yeah that night yeah, yeah. What are, what's a great story it is a great story i never Super imagined sick. having being that close to an otter there you go. Yeah. So. See, when you live here on the Monterey Peninsula and you got an ocean <laughs> outside, you yeah. never know you what's going to happen. It's true. It's true. You never know. Anyway, great story, Katie. Thank mm -hmm. you for bringing it up, and I yeah. hope you folks out there enjoyed that little story. <laughs> Thank you, Channel 7, for letting us use that clip mm -hmm. off YouTube. And now one more video from Michael McDonald. And then guess what? It's Wendy Brickman time at 8 o'clock. So let's go do one more song with Michael. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're having a heavy topic. Yep. We're kind of talking about what uh, Mike Zwirling, MZ, over at KSCO, and I are going to cook up on a Saturday special on Michael's radio program. I was just telling Katie, probably the end of this month, we're going to talk about for two hours what's going to happen when the 9.0 earthquake hits this area. Ah, if. If. And when. Yeah. Well, But it's been if. 125 years since there's been a big quake. Yeah. Would you say it, we're due? I mean. You never know. You never know. Nature. Mother nature. Yeah. These things are out of our control, but there are things that are within our control. How and to be prepared. That is, that, that is why, and I am a, uh, a former Boy Scout, mm. <laughs> and our motto was, in Boy Scouts, be prepared. Be prepared. So how are you going to prepare for the 9.0? What are you going if to do? It happens. If it happens. How, how are you going to be prepared? Here's Wendy Brickman. Hey, Wendy. How are you? We're doing great. I have a question for you. Oh. Yeah. Okay. How are you going to be prepared <laughs> for the 9.0 earthquake when it hits? If. If it but hits. I have a few batteries. <laughs> you have a few batteries? Okay. That's All good. right. Do you, do you have any, starting point. Do you have any? The funny story is the funny story is in the 90s. So in 89, when you had your earthquake here, my husband was on the 17th floor of a building in West Los Angeles, uh -huh. and it was all these lawyers on this floor. And when the 1989 earthquake hit, every single lawyer felt it in L.A. Ooh. I've been very cognizant of the earthquake, and I know that um, MZ, who we did a show with for four years, has a basement and uh, emergency. So anyway, the point was Red Cross published this we bought a backpack and Red Cross published a list of what you should assemble. Yes. I took a trash can, put it in my garage, and I was up to like $300, and I hadn't even scratched the surface. Of mm. what you need. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, yeah. what, what be prepared is, is a great word or two yeah. words. But what people don't realize really, Wendy, is today, you know, in the old days there were landlines. Right. And landlines Not worked, landline. no matter what. Landline. Landlines always worked because there were batteries at the central offices of the phone company to back up the phone. So mm. if something bad happened, you pick up the landline, you could talk to somebody. How are you? Is everything okay over there? Today, that's not going to work. You know why? Because everybody's using cell phones. True. And cell phone transmitters in the buildings where the towers are, there are not backup generators. So, no communication. How are you going to talk to somebody? 
Well, during the storms, just this January and March, yeah. the power went out in our home twice, mm-hmm. and I used my landline. Mm. You're one of the few Quite that still have a landline. But yeah, it's ninety five dollars a month. Wow! Wow! So it's not insignificant. I don't no. know what you're paying. We should dock. This landlines are a lot of money. That's why people have disconnected them. That's why they don't have landlines anymore. Because you count on that exactly. cell phone working, right? Every time you pick it up to call, it's working. But what happens in the but 9.0 earthquake? If it happens. If it happens. You'll talk to Swirling. You'll talk to MZ. And what we're going to do, MZ happens. and I are going to do a show on KSCO <laughs> on a Saturday. Uh, and we're going to get someone from um, Office of Emergency Preparedness mm. and uh, FEMA. And we're going to find out what happens. Because, Wendy, you can't go to the supermarket and buy any groceries. Because everything at the supermarket, all those computers, to check you out, that's all electricity. And supermarkets don't have backup generators, and neither do gas True. stations. They don't have backup generators True. to pump gas. Well, you get a thing. I did buy one of those things. You could do a manual gas pump. <laughs> there we go. But see, Wendy, you're thinking anyway. now. You're thinking, Wendy. You're thinking. Oh, yeah, I thought about 30 years ago, and, <laughs> and I had to throw out all those canned goods. So ah. I was thoughtfully thinking, put them in the trash can in the garage. Yeah, anyway, I, I want to tell you, Gary yeah. and Katie, that I used to, this was post, I mean, I never met the guy, but the former tour manager of the Doobie Brothers was my employer in 1977 and 78. Oh, and wow. I used those videos before anyone else. That I know of. That's right. The Doobie Brothers. Instrument Reynolds and Hollywood. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, cool. see that? And we're doing Michael McDonald tonight, who was an original Doobie guy. I know. Yeah, I how about that? I did not know he did. Yeah, he did videos for the Doobie Brothers and then also Donna Summer and Denise Williams. That's yeah, he was. I, oh, yeah. He's great. And great the guy. Turtles. And then what happened was the record company thought, what a great idea this guy's doing. And we're going to take it in in our studio and do it ourselves yep. so that was the end of his company that's he true was doing it at outsourcing you know wendy you have all the interesting information from you the do. past you are a walking <laughs> encyclopedia uh-huh. you're a walking <laughs> google <laughs> how about okay. that all right so and what are we ta- have, what are we talking about tonight darling the future yeah well you know um you said something so astute to the mayor peak um, what did i say you know, whether you like fancy, beautiful, historic, you know, nail polish colored cars, it does bring a shot of money uh, infusion. And it's been a tough six months, according to the uh, information I've gotten. So the car shows, which started out with the Concourse d'Elegance, there's like a dozen car shows, starting out August 13th with our friend, Marsha Taylor. Remember the yes, poker rally? Yes, the yes, yes. The poker rally? Good old Marsha. She was a guest on this show, and she's having the poker rally. Right, and celebration at O'Callaghan. Yep. Now, actually, she's not the first. The first is it. Um, it's on Alvarado, totally free, a Monterey kickoff cruise of historic racing cars on August 11th, Friday from 5 to 7. Okay. And then there's a driver's reception. You can meet some of the drivers at Chivo. Oh, wow. From 5 to 7 with complimentary appetizers and live jazz. I so love that. That's a big deal for Chivo, so stop in and Say hi to Mario. Yep. And then we go to the little car show in downtown Pacific. Oh, there you go. Mm. Thank you, Dylan. There you go. Wow, look at all those and, cars. Uh, yeah, you better show the pictures and then I'll know what I'm doing. Yeah, I love that Alfa Romeo, don't you? That is a gorgeous little car. Yep, yep. But look, at all, look at all that's happening over there. Look at all those cars and people. That's going to be... Uh, it's going to be, you know, Car Week is... Probably, other than the U.S. Open or the AT&T, it's probably uh, bringing more people to the Monterey Peninsula than anything else. Am I right or wrong? I think so, absolutely. And um, I like that. What I like, okay, this is Seaside, and I like that it's spread out. No offense to Pacific uh, to Pebble Beach, but they keep people there. Once you're there, you're there. You take a shuttle, you're there. You can't, you know, you don't spend your money. In other parts. Well, now, look at what Seaside did. They have their own event. Um, I think it's called, is it called the Concourse de Lemons? And really? it's Misfits of the Car World on August 19th from 8 to 1.30. That sounds like a fun um, event. I think that's the one. Yeah. And so we're looking at that. 
And that looks fun on a beautiful day to walk around and look at. Boy, look at that day. Yeah, like gorgeous. Gorgeous day. Yeah, that was a beautiful day. Mm. And you can see. Oh, look at that puppy. Isn't that a nice looking vehicle? Let's see. Is it on your screen yet? I know we're lagging hey, on we, internet. We've got a little seven second delay. What is this one here? Dylan? I think this one's from Concourse. Concourse? Is this from Concourse? Okay, that's actually the Concourse with... Is that the winner? Yeah, I don't I don't see anything moving. That's a beautiful it's a car. It's a still. Okay. I'm going to refresh my screen. Refresh your screen, yeah. That's the internet for you. It's oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that silver car, gray car that looks like a Corvette or something. Yeah. No, it's not a Corvette. What is that, Dylan? Do you know what that is? On the, it's like probably on the Bond 20th movie. Sunday. In, I think it's an Aston, Aston Martin. Yeah, Martin. that's what it is. Oh, Katie says it's an Aston Martin. Dylan says it's an Aston Martin. I oh. think they're right. Okay. I'm not sure. Good. Like, it's a cool car. The this James cars, Bond you know, it's car. Art sculpture. Yeah, look at that. I love both cars. What else have you got, Dylan? Now, who are these ladies? Are they? Oh, the they're the I'll tell you, they're the prancing ponies event the on who, August what? 17th, from 11 to 4. They're women-owned exotic, classic muscle sports and electric cars. It's a free event, and there's a fashion show featuring local models and designers. And 11 to 4 awards for the best presentations at four. Wow. I don't even know if they're local, but I think that's kind of fun. Yeah. But for the ladies. Yeah, I like the uh, the uniforms or the outfits or whatever you want. Yeah. Or jumpsuits, I guess. Is that a jumpsuit, Katie? It is. A jumpsuit. And that's Ocean Avenue in Carmel. You can see that. Yep. That's what I'm saying. It's really spread out so much, you know. And what I is like this thing, brings... Dylan? Is that this a Porsche? Is this is in Carmel. Okay, that's in a Carmel. Porsche. Okay. Are they doing anything downtown Carmel like they used to? I don't think they are. Are they? I think the gentleman Not that used that one, to put that... The Prancing Ponies is on Ocean, the one we just discussed. The, uh, there was at one time a an event in Carmel for Car Avenue, Week, yeah. but I think the gentleman the that promoted that, that, I think they passed. that one. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. Do you one, have a favorite, They do have Katie? a Porsche show. My friend's favorite coming car? to Seattle. A, f a favorite event. Oh. Car Week. No, I don't. Mm. But I'll... Keep that one in mind. Yeah, I'll I'll pay attention this car week and she's gonna let pay you attention. Know. Well, I wanted I wanted Dylan to pull up the interactive Monterey Car Week map. Dylan, oh. um, at cmonterey.com has an interactive Monterey Car Week oh, map, which would be cool. Let's do it. Check yeah, it Dylan out. is Dylan is good at doing that. What is cmonterey.com? Is that the yeah. website? And then look up or. And then look so up when what? You pull up Car Week. You search Car, car week. week. It's got all these events. Cmonterey.com. I'm just driving by. I have a story for you, you guys. Please. Mm. In please. 1990s, uh, a guy was coming. I was in the video industry, and a guy was coming to from Musicland, which was a big distributor. And we were having dinner in Monterey, and he called me up, and we confirmed our dinner reservation. And he said, "You know, I have to say, I've never been in a town with so many Ferraris, mm. <laughs> and it was car week." So that's why he was, like, flipping out with all the Ferraris he saw. I think each year they have a celebration of... They do, I think. Uh, uh, but, you know, it's the Porsches, the Ferraris, the Lamborghinis, yep. the Maseratis. They all come here for Car Week. When is Car Week? Oh, look at this. Aug Tuesday, August 13th Tuesday, 9 is to 4 the start. Is Acura in August the park. 13. Actually, I think it's starting on Friday the 11th, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they start having stuff the 11th. The 11th. They have yes. stuff going all the way to, like, the yeah, okay. it it starts around the 11th of August and goes all the way. I know KMBY Radio is going to do some special things. Um, they're having something special out at Laguna Seca. Mm. Uh, there is, of course, Pebble Beach. There's so much going on on Car Week. And the, Monterey the Car Monterey. Week, Pebble Beach, Concours de Elegance. And does it have the interactive map? I don't know. Dylan? Dylan, is there an interactive map That's there? Cool. It is. Okay, so what's what's it say? Dylan, open your mic and talk, please. What's it say? Okay, so starting on the 11th, it has the Monterey Car yeah, Week kickoff. So that looks an like that's down map. in Look at all that, Gary. Downtown. Yeah. Look at how the money is spread out. I like that a lot. <laughs> And also the traffic is spread out a little bit, too. Yeah. Uh, here's the secret, Wendy. Stay home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or 
or go out of town. <laughs> yeah, you're wow. going to be fighting the crowds. So it looks like there's, if I'm reading this right, there's 57 events. 57 wow. events. Going all the way till Are August 20th. Are you kidding? That's crazy. Yeah, because there's 57 really? different little 57 pins here. Really different grown, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, yeah. you know, the one because that is going to be... a couple of them. The one that's going to be my most favorite event is the one that uh, um, our friend uh, uh, Miss Taylor is doing. Marsha's, yeah. Marsha Taylor. Are you going to go to O'Callaghan's? Are you going to um, go? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go to uh, O'Callaghan's because I was invited by Marsha. And KMBY is kicking off Car Week on... On Alvarado Street, uh, from five to seven, I think that's on the eleventh on Friday. Mm. Correct at Chivo, yes. At Chivo, down Chivo. Yeah, see all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you folks out there in TV oh, land, if you're years, watching from Fresno, Ferrari Club there, there's an owners gathering. If you're Thank watching, goodness. if you're watching in Fresno, and I want to say last but not least, Gary. Yeah. You know, Chris Shapes does such a fun job of decorating the wharf. He does. We already ordered our Welcome Car Week banner, mm -hmm. and we're going to decorate the wharf so that car fans, Car Week fans, feel comfortable coming to the wharf and seeing the best show of all, which are the Barking Sea Lions. The huh. Barking Again, Sea like, Lions. Like Katie that. said, you do not get an, you do not do selfies on the rocks with those sea lions, but you can take a gander, and you're the closest you could be, and it's just fun to watch nature. You know, they're doing their thing. Yeah, always. Yeah, well, Katie is a Katie is a uh, uh, a fond uh, advocate of otters. Yeah. Did you hear her story about <laughs> the otter? I love otters. Yeah. yeah. She, Katie, she, I want to tell you something. Tell Every me. Every time on the wharf on the wharf social media, when I put a cute otter, oh my gosh, it's like the highest. There you go. You know, highest numbers on that cute little otter. Mm. And then you could do you otter do it. You ought to watch you, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many otter puns. Yeah, well, you know puns, that exactly. she saved an otter's life. I did. I heard, and that's <laughs> good, but be careful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I was thinking, did she, she have didn't bugs? Get, did she, she didn't get it? bit. It was we just a little baby biting. otter. A baby yeah. hawk come down our chimney, Katie. A baby hawk, baby kestrel hawk on the dish drainer. Really? And I knew I better not pick that kestrel hawk up. And yeah, no. Somebody who was... She took a, a fabric, she took a jacket, and covered its little eyes and, and put it on, and she wore gloves and put his little feet on her wrist and covered him up and walked him out of the house. And That's then put how a, you do it. Put a, you got to be careful with Mother on Nature's the, you do. The, yeah. children. Oh, yeah. We like to watch wildlife, little squirrels and, yep. and herons and hawks looking at the squirrels. Yesterday I was watching a hawk. He was like a, a 747, just <laughs> gliding by. Yeah. Now I know how people invented flying, and he was looking for those baby squirrels. And we have to take, a, you know, when we let our little Yorkies out in the yard, we have to be very careful the yeah. hawks don't swoop in and get oh. our little baby Yorkies. Oh, they've Yorkies. got strong talents, right? Yeah, very strong exactly. talents, yeah. Anyway, anything else on the agenda? No, I'm just so impressed with Katie and her oh. approach to helping children. I think Thank a you. TV show, my college roommate we both were in broadcast journalism she went on and did a kind of a children's theater show for many years in chicago oh, cool and i just think there's i always think you wendy, know nothing wendy. not everything has to be animated wendy. yeah you know I agree. wendy when I you went. when you uh, meet katie in person and hear her her story about her wanting to be the next mr rogers only it's going to be mrs rogers <laughs> And we're trying Ms. to get Rogers. her. I think she should be Ms. Rogers. Ms. Ms. All right, Ms. Rogers. But. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the neighborhood. Mm. Her neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, we want to get her her own children's show. So we're we're hopefully going to plan to do that. We need some sponsors, Katie. Yeah. And Wendy's going to help us. Aren't Wendy, you, Wendy? You'll, you'll be on my speed dial. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was thinking, you know, Ahana is the new yeah, Ahana's great program for montage. Yeah, and I would tell them about your concept because what you're telling the viewers sounds like you're creating much happier, healthier, um, less stressed children. Yep. Yep. yep she Absolutely. Is. 
So that would be the. Pr- I'll give you the phone number. All yeah. right. Great. Well, listen, we got to run. We have Adam out in the green room Thank getting you. ready for our last interview. So uh, we're going to say goodnight to you, darling. We're going to go back to one more video from Michael, and then we're going to bring That's Adam great. in. Good night, right, Wendy. We'll talk to you next week. Oh, wait a minute. No next week, Wendy. No next week. And no, 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 I know, no I know. August 20. Dylan's going on you vacation. You could do a remote from the car shows. Yeah. Well, we'll take lots of pictures and show them when we come back on the 27th. Anyway, Sounds great, thanks yeah. again, darling. We'll talk to you on the Bye. 27th of August. Good night. Yes. Thanks again. Thank All right, Wendy Brickman, Brickman Marketing, who is here with us every week, except the next two weeks, because <laughs> we won't be here. Taking a little hiatus, that's what they call it. Hiatus, it is. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Back <laughs> to uh, one more Michael McDonald video, and then we're going to bring Adam in. Thank you, Dylan Holmes. Thanks, and Dylan. How about that? And that's Dylan's three videos for tonight. And I told Dylan, now he's going on vacation yep. with his sister Rachel and mom and dad uh, back east. And so he's going to do a travel log mm. for us for the show on August 27th. He's going to show all the places that the, the family went. And so you guys have got to tune in on August 27th because Dylan's going to bring a little travel log. How exciting. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, it will be. Anyway, uh, we want to thank this gal. Me? You, Katie Brizzoni, for being our co-host. Mm. Her second time here at Monterey on tonight, and hopefully not your last. No. Nope. And uh, she said, I'm so much more relaxed tonight <laughs> than I was the yeah. first time. Hey, see how simple? It is simple. Isn't it fun? It is fun. It's fun. It does take some stamina, though. I was yeah, telling well, Gary, I it's, was like, it is. Yeah, we're here three hours, and you get a little tired of doing this, but we, you know, we the only it. thing we don't have going here is the coffee pot. True. <laughs> if we had the uh, the caffeine going, we might last a little longer. That's true. But we're on the downhill slope. <laughs> anyway, we've got about six minutes left. Dylan, do we have any more Michael McDonald to go out on tonight? Is yeah. there... Is there another video of him singing uh, his heart out? We have one more. Yeah. One more. Thanks, Gary. Thank Thanks, you, everybody, Katie. for watching. Thank you, everyone, See for you watching. Next time. We're going to get back to one more Michael McDonald video. Don't forget, we're not here next week or the week after, the 13th and the 20th. We'll be back on August 27th. Probably then, if you're watching us on channel 19.4, it'll be gone. We'll be on 27.10 here in Monterey, mm-hmm. of course. We'll still be on 27.1 in Fresno, and we are streaming live at KMBYTV.com. You've been watching Monterey on tonight. I'm Gary Morris. Good night, everybody. Good night.